This video will explain how to import data that was measured in the field with Leica Captivate into LISCAD SEE. In particular, it focuses on the import of coding and line work. The video does not include the importing of multi-station scan data or images, as these will be covered in another video. Ideally, as much drawing as possible is automated when we import data into LISCAD, as this is going to save us time in the office. This video shows what drawing can be automated, including the importing of all points, lines and codes, the total station setup and measurement data, recreating the line work as it was measured in the field, and if the correct settings are made within LISCAD, drawing the correct symbols and assigning the correct line styles, plus if the field work was carried out using LISCAD compatible commands, then we can also have the scaling of symbols and the displaying of custom descriptions. The video will be split into three parts, the first part is the workflow section, initially looking at the data within Leica Captivate and then showing the process to get that data into LISCAD. The second part is a look behind the scenes. It goes through the LISCAD configuration needed to achieve that first part. Then the third and final part is all about optimization. It shows how making a few small changes in the field procedures can further streamline the workflow and improve the final result. Before watching this video, it is recommended to watch the how-to videos that explain coding and line work within Leica Captivate. The job we will use is the one which was initially created during the two coding and line work videos, so we already know it a little, however we should look at it again and in more detail. The best way to do this is to use the 3D Viewer app, so let's do that now and look at some specific data. In the videos we measured this tree, but separate to the video we've also added some dimensional attributes for the tree height, its canopy or spread, and to confirm the species of tree. We also measured plenty of linear features, such as the fences, footpaths and curbs, some of which include more complicated line work, such as this fence-gate-fence -fence combination, this T-junction between two fences, this arc defined by three points, this best fit arc, defined by multiple points, and then the pond, which was measured as a spline, and also in this case, as a closed line. Now that we have a good overview of the data, we can move on. As LISCAD is able to read the Leica Captivate job format directly, we just transfer or copy the job onto our computer, and then simply switch to using LISCAD, where we have two choices. Firstly, a direct data conversion route, which is a very quick and simple one-step process, or alternatively, a field transfer route, where LISCAD first converts our data into a raw file and then into a field file before bringing all of our data into our LISCAD project. Although the second approach does have more steps, it is still very straightforward and offers more flexibility, delivering some additional information, as we'll see in part three of this video, where we'll combine it with some modifications in our field work. But for now, for part one of this video, we'll use the data conversion route, as it is the quickest and easiest option. Step one is simply selecting the instrument family that the data was created with. Then step two is selecting the job that we copied to our computer. Then we need to choose the correct code table and potentially the correct lookup file. These are the tools that make sure the codes we used in the field are recognized by LISCAD. Once these settings are correct and we have our required job, we simply press OK and all of the data that we measured in the field is imported into our LISCAD project. So let's take a closer look at what has been imported. We can see that the tree has been drawn with the correct symbol, as has this manhole, and that the line work is correctly drawn with line styles. Let's now have a look at some of that more complicated line work, such as the fence-gate-fence -fence combination, this T-junction between two fences, the arc defined by three points, the best fit arc from multiple points, and the spline, which is also a closed line. At the moment, LISCAD is colouring all of the data by data type. For example, points have different colours to lines, and also lines have different colours depending on whether they are break lines or not. We can easily switch it so that the data is being coloured by the code we used, and see that everything really does compare well to the same data within Leica Captivate. For now, this is the end of part one. The most important thing that we had already configured when we imported the data into LISCAD was the code table. 
because when data is imported into the system, any object with a code defined in the selected code table will be imported with the point and line attributes as defined by the code table. An alternative approach to having codes match the code table is for LISCAD to use a lookup table. It's used to match the codes of an incoming data set to the feature codes in an existing LISCAD code table. But if the incoming data set uses codes that don't match ones defined in the code table, and there's not a suitable lookup table, then the objects will all be assigned a default code and drawn according to the default settings. Typically, this will result in the data looking like this, where the data has been imported and the positions are correct, but no symbols have been drawn and all line styles are missing. So it is definitely worth spending a few moments to set up the configuration in order to save time in the office with every data set. The best place to start is with the code table. We go to the task utilities and then select tables code table to either create a new table or open an existing one. At this point, we should mention that for the job used in the code in the line work videos, no particular thought went into what office software the data would end up in. Everything was completed using simple, generic codes such as centerline, fence, footpath, gate, curb, manhole, pond, tree, verge bottom, verge top, and wall. LISCAD actually has a limit of eight characters per code. As we use longer codes, we need to understand that LISCAD will only recognize eight characters per code. So either the code table needs to be set up to match that, or we have to use a lookup table. So here we will use a new code table intentionally set up to match the codes from the field. We have already made it, so we can open it now. As the route we want to use is a data conversion route, we know that when doing this, LISCAD takes into account the first eight characters of each code, so our code table has been made accordingly, truncating the longer codes after the first eight characters. Also, we can see that we have configured symbols. For the manhole code, we've asked LISCAD to use a circular symbol, whereas for the tree code, we've asked LISCAD to use a symbol that represents the foliage of a tree. Switching to the lines view, we are then able to see that the code table has been set up to allow most of the codes to be stringable and that it has line styles and colors set up suitable for each code. As already mentioned, another option would have been to use a lookup table where we can match the codes recorded in the field with codes that exist in our code table. To do that, we simply go to tables, lookup table, and then either make a new one or open an existing one. Here is one created especially for using this data set via the field transfer route, where the codes are truncated to eight characters from the right instead of from the left. But thanks to the configuration of the code table and the simplicity of a data conversion route, we don't actually need to use this lookup table for now. We will save that for part three of the video. Instead, we can go back through the import using the data conversion route with our code table selected to make sure that once again, our data comes through looking exactly as it did in part one of the video. In fact, a lot of the configuration work is already done because LISCAD comes with a pre-configured like a Captivate code list. So if the field work is done using this, then the process really is very straightforward and even the office configuration is minimal. As this data set was collected in a very generic way in the field, there are some LISCAD features which we were unable to utilize. Features which would have further automated the office work, including the full scaling of symbols and also automatic custom descriptions. Survey are what we will focus on in this third part of the video. We will start by looking at using code attributes to scale symbols. Depending on how LISCAD is configured, the attribute used to define the scaling of symbols differs. As during this process, we will tell LISCAD that we're using like or on board lines without a string number as part of the code definition and without using the code table for stringing, so it automatically will look to the first and second attributes to define the scaling of symbols. Now, when we measure a tree, we're prompted to enter the tree's canopy spread as the first attribute. Then, when we measure the manhole, we're prompted to enter the diameter of the manhole itself, again, as the first attribute. That was a very small change to our site procedure. But as we will now show, it does allow us to automate more of the office work. This time, we'll import the data using the field transfer route rather than data conversions. During the field transfer route, there are a few steps to carry out. But before we begin those, we should tell this CAD a little bit about the field coding we did. So in the task field transfer, we can go to our settings and code definition 
to tell ListCAD that we don't want to use string numbers as part of our code. We want to use the longest codes possible, i.e. eight characters, and we want ListCAD to use lines which we used on board. But with it set up as we need, we can continue to our first step, which is creating a raw file. We go to Input, Data Recorder, and then set where we want to store our raw file. This is a ListCAD format that contains all of the original measurements and codes that we recorded, so it is a great file to archive as a record of the data collection. Once we set where to store it, we then have to choose which job to create it from. We could view and edit this file now, but instead we will directly proceed to the next step, converting the raw file to a field file by going to Resolve, Create Field File. A field file is another ListCAD format. This time it is a plain text format that is very easy to read and a good place to correct data recording or data entry errors. But instead of making any edits, we will just proceed straight onto the final step, which is to tell ListCAD to reduce the field file, which is when it processes the field observations into objects in our ListCAD project. It is here that we get to select which ListCAD code table to use and if we want one, which lookup table to use. Of course, we will use the ones we've created in the second part of the video. And also we should just check our additional options because for Leica Captivate data, where we used code in the line work in the field, it's important to make sure that code table stringing is disabled. Once this is all set up as required, we can press OK to import the data. Here we'll get a report of the data, but as we don't need to look at that now, we can simply close it so that our drawing is displayed and we can see that our tree and manhole symbols are scaled exactly as we defined. The final thing we'll look at in this video is the use of ListCAD operation codes. These can be entered into Leica Captivate as free codes, which don't do anything for us live in the field, but they are commands for the software back in the office. We will use adding custom descriptions to points as an example of these, although there are many other use cases which can be read about in the ListCAD help files and tutorials, or by discussing them with your local representative. If we go into ListCAD's help and search for op code, we find the documentation on Leica and Vilt operation codes. Here, we can see a list of all the codes available, and if we look, we'll find that operation code 14 is the one that we need to use to create point descriptions live in the field. The way we log operation codes when using Leica Captivate is to use free codes. And the easiest way to log a free code is to use the Select Free Codes panel, but we should configure that to be accessible via a hotkey or the User Favorites panel. When we are then in the process of collecting data and have recorded a point which we want to add a custom description to, we simply press our configured hotkey or use the favorites panel to access these free codes. Here we're shown all the free codes which are available in our code list and we simply select point description. We then use the different attributes to add the text that we want to be displayed. Once we've done that for this manhole, we can take a look at how this will work in ListCAD. Once again, we went through the field transfer route of creating a raw file and then using that to create a field file. And then we reduce that field file. Here we can see that that has brought through our custom description for our manhole. Now that we know how this operation code works, we could actually create codes that prompt us for the text that we want by changing the attribute label. For example, here we've made a tree description free code. It actually asks us or reminds us what information it's looking for. Once we've entered the details that we have asked for and we have stored the code, we can also be more intelligent about how we use that custom description. Rather than simply displaying exactly what was typed in the field, we can actually combine what was typed in the field with fixed predefined text. We simply have to modify our code table. When modifying the code table, we simply use the hashtag symbol to specify which of our free code attributes should go where and how we want that to be combined with fixed text. Once we've done that, we can again use the field transfer route to create a raw file, to create the field file, to reduce the field file, and then to view our data. Now we can see that the data better represents the initial survey. The symbols are scaled as we require, and both the manhole and tree have their desired custom descriptions. This shows that with the right combination of code list, code table, and procedures, we are able to automate a huge amount of the office work and have a very impressive, smooth, quick, and easy data flow.